pollination. In the preceding sections, you have learned that the male and female gametes in flowering plants are produced in the pollen grain and embryo sac, respectively. As both types of gametes are non-motile, they have to be brought together for fertilization to occur. How is this achieved? Pollination is the mechanism to achieve this objective. Transfer of pollen grains shed from the anther to the stigma of a pistil is termed as pollination. Flowering plants have evolved an amazing array of adaptations to achieve pollination. They make use of external agents to achieve pollination. Kinds of pollination. Depending on the source of pollen, pollination can be divided into three types. Autogamy. In this type, pollination is achieved within the same flower. Transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. In a normal flower, which opens and exposes the anther and the stigma, complete autogamy is rather rare. Autogamy in such flowers requires synchrony in pollen release and stigma receptivity, and also the anthers and the stigma should lie close to each other so that self pollination can occur. Some plants, such as viola, common pansy, oxalis, and comelina produce two types of flowers, chasmogamous flowers which are similar to flowers of other species with exposed anthers and stigma and cleistogamous flowers which do not open at all. In such flowers, the anther and stigma lie close to each other. When anther dehisces and the flower buds, pollen grains come in contact with the stigma to effect pollination. Thus, cleistogamous flowers are invariably autogamous as there is no chance of cross-pollen landing on the stigma. Cleistogamous flowers produce a shared seed set even in the absence of pollinators. Do you think that cleistogamy is advantageous or disadvantageous to the plant? Why? Gidnogamy. Transfer of a pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant. Although gidnogamy is functionally cross-pollination involving a pollinating agent, genetically it is similar to autogamy since the pollen grains come from the same plant. Xenogamy. Transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of a different plant. This is the only type of pollination which during pollination brings genetically different types of pollen grains to the stigma. Self-pollinated flowers, cross-pollinated flowers and pleistogamous flowers, chasmogamous flowers. Agents of pollination. Plants use two abiotic wind and water and one biotic animals agents to achieve pollination. Majority of plants use biotic agents for pollination. Only a small proportion of plants use abiotic agents. Pollen grains coming in contact with the stigma is an enhanced factor in both wind and water pollination. To compensate for these uncertainties and associated loss of pollen grains, the flower produce enormous amount of pollen when compared to the number of ovules available for pollination. Pollination by winds is more common amongst abiotic pollinations. Wind pollination also requires that the pollen grains are light and non-sticky so that they can be transported in wind currents. They often possess well-exposed stamens so that the pollens are easily dispersed into wind currents and large often feathery stigma to easily trap airborne pollen grains. Wind pollinated flowers often have a single ovule in each ovary and numerous flowers packed into an inflorescence. A familiar example is the corn cob. The tassels you see are nothing but the stigma and style which wave in the wind to trap pollen grains. Wind pollination is quite common in grasses. Pollination by water is quite rare in flowering plants and is limited to about 30 genera, mostly monocotyledons. As against this, you would recall that water is a regular mode of transport for male gametes among the lower plant groups such as algae, bryophytes and pteridophytes. It is believed particularly for some bryophytes and pteridophytes that their distribution is limited because of the need for water for the transport of male gametes and fertilization. Some examples of water pollinated plants are Varicinaria and Hydrilla which grows in freshwater and several marine sea grasses such as Sostira. Not all aquatic plants use water for pollination. In a majority of aquatic plants, such as water hyacinth and water lily, the flowers emerge above the level of water and are pollinated by insect or wind, as in most of the land plant. In Valisnarium, the female flower reaches the surface of water by the long stalk and the male flower or pollen grains are released onto the surface of water. They are carried passively by wind currents. Some of them eventually reaches the female flower and the stigma. In another group of water pollinated plants, such as sea grasses, female flowers remain submerged in water 
and the pollen grains are released inside the water. Pollen grains in many such species are long ribbon like and they are carried passively inside the water. Some of them reach the stigma and achieve pollination. In most of the water pollinated species, pollen grains are protected from wetting by a mucilaginous covering. Both wind and water pollinated flowers are not very colorful and do not produce nectar. Majority of flowering plants use a range of animals as pollinative agents. Bees, butterflies, flies, beetles, wasps, and moths, birds, sunbirds, and hummingbirds, and bats are the common pollinating agents. Among the animals, insects, particularly bees, are the dominant biotic pollinating agents. Even larger animals such as some primates, lemurs, arboreal tree-dwelling rodents, or even reptiles, jungle lizards and garden lizards have also been reported as pollinating agents. Often flowers of animal pollinating plants are specifically adapted for a particular species of animal. Majority of insect pollinating flowers are large, colorful, fra fragrant and rich in nectar. When the flowers are small, a number of flowers are clustered into an inflorescence to make them conspicuous. Animals are attracted to flowers by colors and or fragrance. The flower pollinated by flies and beetles secrete fall odors to attract these animals. To sustain animal visits, the flowers have to provide rewards to the animals. Nectar and pollen grains are the usual floral rewards. For harvesting the reward from the flower, the animal visitor comes in contact with the anthers and the stigma. The body of the animal gets a cotton coating of pollen grains, which are generally sticky in animal pollinated flowers. When the animal carrying pollen on its body surface comes in contact with the stigma, it brings about pollination. Pollination by water in various area. Insect pollination. In some species, floral rewards are in providing safe places to lay eggs. An example is that of the tallest flower of Amorpha phallus. The flower itself is about 6 feet in height. A similar relationship exists between a species of moth and the plant yucca, where both species, moth and the plant, cannot complete their life cycle without each other. The moth deposits its eggs in the locule of the ovary, and the flower in turn gets pollinated by the moth. The larvae of the moth come out of the eggs as the seed starts developing. 